and welcome to another edition of Rise and Shine. Henry Hasib and myself, James Gordon, are here today to talk to you about some current news. Uh, and I think the news has been, the, the most current event in our news today has been President Donald Trump. So we'll talk a little bit about his first 100 days and how, how things are going and, and, and go back and forth on that. Uh, Brother Hasib, bring us in with a quick prayer, and then we're going to take a, uh, a pause for a brief break. Okay. And we'll come right back and jump into the subject. I uh, sure do. we got a lot to talk about here. We so talk say about a beautiful the prayer. Subject. A beautiful prayer. Uh, we'll start with the prayer then. Okay. With the name of God, the merciful benefactor, merciful redeemer, show us the straight way, the way of those whom thou hast bestowed thy grace, and those whose portion is not wrath and who go not astray. Uh, thank you for, uh, again for letting us have uh, the opportunity to get before the people to express some knowledge that we hope that will benefit and help them. Amen. Amen. Uh, we'll be right back, I guess, after this commercial. We'd like for you to join us each Sunday for Rise and Shine with Robert Battles, James Gordon, and Henry Hasib on Fox 10 at 5.30 a.m. each Sunday morning. We'd like for you to join us so that we can provide you with information that will be beneficial to you and to your family. Mr. Buckley, how you doing today? Doing great, Dr. Gordon. How are you, sir? Great, sir. I appreciate it. Thank you, Jenny. Appreciate your treatment with the Alabama Injury and Pain Clinic. What was your favorite thing? Well, first of all, no out-of-pocket expense, and my back has gotten great. This is great. You know, a lot of our patients worry about who's going to pay their bill. So it's good to know that the insurance company will pay after your case is settled. No out-of-pocket expenses. Call 476-PAIN. The choice is yours. Welcome back to the show. Uh, Rossi, what are you going to say right before a break? Well, we were talking about uh, current events, and I guess the only events that seem to be happening now, especially when it comes to news and national news, every station I turn on, uh, I hear about our president. Is something going on with, uh, uh, and I, they, they, they hardly say it, the ones I uh, hear, they say Donald Trump. They don't say President Donald Trump, and I don't know what kind of meaning that's got to do with it, but uh, it looks like people are trying to run as far away from him as they can. And well, But uh, he's making the news. He's still making the news. As people say, he's still in the campaign mode. I believe he's supposed <laughs> to be looking at having some rallies for now and in the future again. I guess he can rally his way to uh, this four years of presidency. Well, I think the, uh, you know, I say that any time a person outsider comes to office, unfortunately you have those who are are benefiting from the ways of the past are going to be up at arms and trying to protect their turf. We call it pork in politics. When uh -huh. people put the um, pork's a bad word. When people put that extra fat or extra Well that's what it is, uh, Doc. Cushion, it's pork. <laughs> yeah, well, it and I, and I, well I think that's what President Donald Trump's <laughs> running up against. I think he's doing a, a pretty good job for, for his efforts of trying, but the people who are have been taking advantage of the system and so used to getting Mm -hmm. uh, benefit from the system illegally over the la over these few years, they're now having to pay the piper, and now they're having to try to throw stones because it's going to be time for them to stop taking uh, uh, illegal gains out of these laws that they pass. Mm -hmm. Well, I think he just uh, got too much that he's trying to get involved in. What I mean, that, lot fix, everything I from WikiLeaks to all yeah. of this, the campaign is over with, Mr. President. Let's get down to business. But one thing I can agree with you, I do know that when change comes, mm -hmm. people don't like to change yes. because they know one way, and then when you introduce a change, they tend to be, uh, even though it may be changed for the better, it tends to be a little resistant to that type of change. So we're going to have, that's natural in uh, any type of presidency, a uh, uh, governor, a uh, mayor, whatever, people a little bit resistance to change. But... Uh, I think change is a good thing, but I always like to see change for the better and not the worse. And I will say that one of the uh, sad things about what's going on today is that when uh, the the WikiLeaks came out or the leaks came out about the Democratic emails, no one ever spoke about the content of the emails. It was always blaming Russia or blaming this person or that person for leaking the emails. And it's ironic that with President Trump, when the leaks come out, uh, he thinks it's from the intelligence community, be the FBI, the CIA, or whomever, uh, no one is talking about who leaked it. They're talking about the content of the leak. Mm -hmm. So I think you need to use the same level of measurement, uh, the same yardstick, 
for either 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 time. And I think that's the only time that it seems like he's in campaign mode when he does the comparison. And it is unfair uh, that we can seem to change gears when it's convenient for us. We got situational uh, politicians and situational credibility where people uh, um, will, if it's, if it's something to benefit them, the credibility seems to be pretty high. And when someone steps on their toes or gets ready to pull that, that, uh, that benefit, that illegal, ill-gotten gain out of their, their lap, then their credibility sinks low mm -hmm. and they start throwing stones. But let's talk about uh, and President what, Trump. Let, hold on a second. Now we got we got immigration. Right. We got, well, we got, we got all those things. But before we go there, I just well, want immigration to make a, economy. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll make make this point. Uh, but immigration uh, but, and economy. Yeah. When you finish making that point, let's talk. Let's take each one of those individually and see what the difference has been on those. The, the policies made is the policy on economy or policy on immigration mm -hmm. make our country better or make our country worse or more at risk. I'll go ahead and say what that Well, what I was going to say, since January the 20th, the, uh, the inauguration, January the 20th, I guess it started January the 20th, um, we've been getting so much breaking news. I have never seen so much breaking news. Every night I turn on the TV, it's breaking news. It is so much breaking news that I don't even take a break to look at it anymore because I know, I already know what the breaking news is about. It's about Donald Trump. Trump. Yeah. And uh, I just wanted to add that to it there. But yes, we need to talk about this economy uh, and we need to talk about the things that's going and how it's going to affect our citizens and, and the American people and the world. You know what the United States of America do, what we do in America does not only just affect America, but it has an effect on the whole world. So when we get our um, people that's in the media uh, that's being called fake, then of course the natural thing is to, you want to come back. So now if you throw a stone at me, then you can't expect for me not to pick up one and throw back at you. I mean, that's what war is, is all that, about. But isn't that what Donald Trump's been doing the whole time? His whole, whole since he announced he's running for office, he's been a counterpuncher. Right. He's never thrown a punch first. He's like Rambo oh, in yes, first blood. Oh, yes, he did. <laughs> no, he's not Rambo in first blood. Somebody <laughs> insulted him. He's got insulted worse. But I would think the media has this assumption that they're supposed to be treated better or that they're holier than thou. Media is just a, it's a profession, and there's no, no level of treatment that a media person must have. So mm -hmm. I think that the, the fact that someone insults you uh, as a chiropractor, I've been called many names, but I don't react to the names. So when you react to the names, that's what lessens you. I think uh, our first lady, our former first lady said it best, when they go low, we go high, and I've been still mm -hmm. waiting for us to go high because so far is, is when they go low, be they being the Republicans or the Democrats, we've gone lower and lower and lower and lower, and it's time for somebody to be the big person in the room or the adult in the room right. and say enough of this foolishness, okay, you got your insult in, let me ask you a legitimate question or let me give you a legitimate answer and everybody be happy because at the end of the day, it's about our country, and it's about those the, the, the future. Mm -hmm. And if you don't like anybody in this country right now that you live for, live for those unborn uh, mm -hmm. future. It's, it, you can always look far ahead enough to say, I'm going to do it for those who are not even born yet, who are those Americans who, mm -hmm. who are yet to come, because this is a great country. It's been great for all of us. Mm -hmm. Let's make it great for the future generations. Well, you know, it's uh, as a citizen in an American, we always want to see America at its best. And I think right now when I look at what's going on uh, in the, the political arena, especially in the national political arena, I don't think that represent America as at its best. And we got to get better. We, As you say, we need to have respect for each other. But uh, if uh, a question is asked to me that I don't like, and in, you know, in politics you're going to always get questions that you don't like or don't really want to hear, then I shouldn't, uh, I shouldn't insult the person who's asking the question. And I see that a whole lot now in uh, uh, these meetings with the president. And matter of fact, uh, the, the, the picture Saturday Night Live, I think it is, they got so much material that I think uh, they're going to have enough to last probably the whole year of what has already happened. Yes, well, like I said, that, that's, it's always easier to go lower. Uh, than the person who's throwing the stone. I think the stones have been thrown from both sides. Mm -hmm. So I think that at the end of the day, uh, let's talk about uh, the economy, what we've done for the economy. Has the economy grown? Has the stock market grown record numbers? Uh, let's talk about the immigration and ways we can do that. Let's take a brief break and we'll see if we can't find our third host because we look like we need a little bit more ammunition in this talk. Well, I'll tell you, I agree with you. <laughs> we'll be right back after these brief commercials.
You had a wreck, you decided to wait to see if the pain would go away. It's been a week or two, the pain hasn't gone away. Quit procrastinating. Come and see me, chiropractor Dr. James Gordon at the Alabama Injury and Pain Clinic. Call me 24 hours a day at 476-PAIN. The choice is yours. No money needed. No appointment needed. What are you waiting for? Call 476-PAIN. h h Financial Services in Mobile has over 20 years experience in accounting, bookkeeping, appraisals, real estate, and year-round tax preparations. Give them a call today at 251-438-1620 or visit them at 1560 St. Stephen's Road in Mobile. Let your money grow in our care at h h Financial Services. Welcome back from the break. We've uh, seemed to be a little bit shy on our discussion about President Trump's effort in his first 100 days. So we went out and found Brother Battles to uh, <laughs> add, him on the, add him on the show. But Brother, I see we're talking more about the economy, not criticizing anybody, any past minister. Let's talk about President Donald Trump's efforts in the economy from what you see as a business person. Uh, the efforts to lower the taxes on corporations, uh, the, the seem to be moving in the stock market. Uh, does that seem, is that showing that well, his policies are, are taking ground? Uh, well, uh, we go back just uh, 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 pre-President Trump. There you go. Unemployment was going there headed go. down. Now, so let's not, no, 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 let's not, let's not, 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 brother, see, we yeah. only got a one-hour show. Yeah, but I'm saying we have to give credit where it's due. Let's talk uh, about unemployment what? rate was down. It was down at four, four, a little uh, less than uh, five percent. No so it was going. It was about where it is now. So it hadn't went down uh, since this time. Uh, the stock market was going up at the time. It reached a new height. That, but it, but it was in an upward uh, uh, spiral movement about before three, six, President nine, <laughs> Trump. Took, we have to say that. I mean, that's just the truth. Go back and check. Facts, you can go back and check. Now, fake, I don't know what you can do with that. And um, But what about the CEOs, what they're saying? What were you saying about the economy, Brother Bell? Well, about the economy, Dr. Gentleman, uh, when you look at the rise you talk about with the stock market, the reason why the stock market is, is rising like it is is because stock market is speculation. Mm -hmm. Listen to this. Then, when the business person see President Trump talk about the loosening of regulations that will make it grow. So it's nothing that he has done, no significant impact that hadn't been already, like Brother Hasib said. Okay. Now, we all want a better economy. I know I do. I love to see uh, uh, an economy that uh, is... But really not on progressive. alternative facts. Well, so, not you know. if it's got to put... Because what I see what's happening now, and I don't see any change in this, except that Poor people are getting poorer. Yeah. We said we're going to reduce taxes, but uh, the taxes is being reduced on the rich. And I guess we just, uh, whatever, gates arrive for the poor people because they're not seeing no decrease in taxes. Well, and arrived. these are the people who... Uh, well, I think the thing is, uh, the at the end of the day, if, if the, say you're saying the policy was put in place under President Obama's administration... I think the corporate leaders, if you listen to them talk, not listen to the mm -hmm. reporters. Reporters somehow can't be unbiased. They don't seem they seem to have a problem with being unbiased. Uh, they always they got this emotion thing going. President Trump seems to be emotional sometimes. Reporters seem to be emotional sometimes. But looking at the facts and talking to the CEOs and listening to the CEOs, when you watch the MSNBCs or the the CNBCs, the the financial channels, mm -hmm. uh, they seem that the climate seems to be better for businesses. Uh, I understand that even uh, recently. Uh, President Trump released. Uh, he said he reversed the coal. It was an executive order about coal with the mm -hmm. clean, a lot of the clean uh, act, clean air regulations that put coal industries out of business. Even mm -hmm. in, even in Birmingham, Alabama, uh, to severely uh, restrict the coal industry. I think those new laws or new orders in place will help the coal industry grow. But and at the end of the day, when they grow. That's the union jobs. Those are the thirty dollar, forty dollar an hour jobs. Mm -hmm. That brings that's our working class people. And now the people, now the country uh, will, will do better if we get more thirty, forty dollar an hour jobs uh, in. But Dr. Joe, we we hope that that really could be a reality because unemployment has a devastating effect on all of our citizens. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, let's take a little reality check now. It's a reality check. So if you're talking about the the instantaneous 
uh, deregulation, but at the same time, what about the long-term health that's going to really... Okay, they're debating right now uh, on trying to demolish the Affordable <coughs> Health Care Act. Mm -hmm. They want to, ex to, to let it go, but they can't because they don't have anything in place. So if you're going to talk about making America a more healthier nation, then and when you go with deregulation on things, and then you have the new EPA uh, uh, commissioner who has just been uh, confirmed. Uh, yes, sir. It's going to cause another significant. So are you well, talking about long-term or short-term? One, 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 let's stay on one subject matter. Right now, we're not talking about the health care. We're talking about economy. Now, economy, but let's talk about the clean drive air. Let's talk about the clean economy, air. Dr. Gore. No, sir, it doesn't. Yes. No, sir, it doesn't. And I think as Democrats, as, as we're all Democrats, we can agree to disagree. See, some Democrats believe in the greenhouse effect. Mm -hmm. I believe that's a hoax. Okay, I don't believe in the greenhouse effect. I don't think that one nation with 30, 300 million people as America, 20% of the world's population or less, if we uh, uh, say, okay, we're going to start the movement, we're going to ruin 100,000 jobs because we're going we're gonna to stop the earth from heating up. That's foolishness. Okay, so in my do you opinion, have any data? Opinion, do you have you don't any either, data? And you don't either. That's right. right. You can make data say what you want it to say. Dumb. You don't have data, and neither do I. All let's right. talk about the unemployment. I numbers. think this might the unemployment be fake numbers, news. That the we're unemployment numbers. It's not even fake news. The unemployment numbers can be easily fudged mm -hmm. because if a person quits looking for a job, they're not counted. The unemployment numbers only those who are receiving unemployment benefits. So at the end of the day, let's tell our people and our viewers. What the facts are, the facts are the numbers can be easily made to look how you want them to look. If I was for the greenhouse effect, I can make the numbers look for me. If I was against it, I can make it look for the other person. But the fact that we don't agree with each other, we've got to be able to disagree without being disagreeable. We've got to be able to, uh, to leave the table with saying, okay, on that matter, we just disagree. I don't have to be on the same page as you to be with you. You and I are together on many, on many issues. Mm -hmm. But some issues we can be a part on, and it's not a problem. That's the problem with our, with our world today is that people in, this, in, this, in our good old uh, USA, our good country, our great country, is saying, if you don't agree with me, mm -hmm. then something's wrong with you. So right? And that's not the case. Mm -hmm. do, do you really believe in your honest heart that the new administration, who has just come in less than a month now, do you believe that any attempt that they are trying to achieve at this current moment right here is designed to raise the middle class uh, for which they made their campaign promise on uh, and to increase the quality of life for America and make America more safer? I believe in, as far as the economy, as Brother Hasif said, there are some things President Obama said that they, uh, did that were good, and there are some things that President Obama did that was bad. There's some things that President Trump would do that was good, and there's some things President bad, Trump that, that was bad. There's no, no, there's no thing as all bad. I so you can see, you can say that way, and we can play the game. No. But at the end of the day, they both do good and bad, and I think at the end of the day, it weighs out. If if what President Trump was doing, or President Obama's doing, had the stock market going an upward tick, and what President Trump is doing continue to go an upward tick, maybe they both got more good than bad as a result to economy. But the stock market, Doctor Gordon, the stock market is not the prerequisite indication. See, we keep talking about the, the stock market. We talk jump about, out of your chair. You see him no, jump out of your chair. We keep talking about the stock market. But what about uh, the things that impact on the quality of life for America? This is it. That's the impact on quality of life. Carry air conditioning. If they decide to stay and those people make $40 an hour mm -hmm. versus leave the country and those people have to get a $10 an hour job, that impacts quality of life. Uh, These paper mills we got in our good old... How many uh, people old, who live in your district, Dr. Look at the pay mill. Look, I'm looking about Western the United Carrier States. Activism. I'm looking at the United States of America. Okay? We're talking about our people. I'm, we're talking, talking about, about African -American. Our, our people. No, we're talking about our people, Americans. America. Americans. African Americans, European Americans, Asian Americans, Indian Americans, and Hasib Americans. We're well, talking about all let, of them. Since you mentioned Hasib America, let, let me have a word no, here. Go ahead, Doug. Because y'all have said so much, but, you know, as Almost I listen, down. there is a truth. There's one thing. I know you said we can take the numbers and we can That's make them right. this way, we can make them that way. But there's a such thing as truth. Now, what we need to do is find the truth of the matter. Not fuzz them over here, right. put them over there. And the only thing I can say, I like to see the stock market goes up, but I know the clients that I deal with, they don't see an increase, a penny increase in their income. They don't feed nobody. They're still coming in hungry. So we got to see how this is going to relate to making America great again. Okay, what we're saying is that people for the last how many ever years haven't seen an increase in their pay. If President Obama put some things in place and it was going this way, 
and President Trump put some things in place and it continues to go that way, and eventually, hopefully, our people will see black, white, pink, and red some changes in the income but pay. Can you, eventually, can you they will. Can you cite anything, Dr. Gordon, that our new president has put into place to facilitate what you said? I say that the I think that the efforts of the old, the, the former president and the efforts of the new president and their and their what opinion, efforts do identify the efforts, Dr. Gordon? Okay, our efforts. Of our old president, no, we're talking uh, about President new, Obama. We're talking about the new president. We ain't let going back finish, there. Let me finish my thought. Let me finish my thought. I see you cut Brother Hasib off. You know. Let me finish my thought. Go the, ahead, the, sir. the efforts of our uh, President Obama, if the stock market got up close to two thousand points and never went over for the for the, the uh, for the uh, in, uh, the Dow Industrial uh, Average, and then the president, new president, President Trump comes in and he deregulates uh, some of the big regulations to put on coal to help that stock grow. Uh, I've seen the stock in the financial industries. Uh, I see RBS, mm -hmm. which is the uh, 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 there's RBS is one of the big banking industries worldwide, mm -hmm. and then Regions Financial even. I watch those stocks grow, so the financial stocks are growing, uh, or those industries. So I think that the deregulations that he has brought within a few months of being in office, a month of being in office, seem to have helped with the corporate mindset that things are doing better, and they're trying to spend more money, they're trying to to spur the economy. It hasn't gotten to Main Street America yet, as Brother Hasif said. Uh, when he's doing my taxes, he don't see where my income has changed. But if the efforts of both presidents is, is pushing us in that direction, I don't have to be against one to be for the other. At the end of the day, I just have to say that hopefully the policies of the one who's in office affects me positively and the majority of Americans positively as far as, as, it, as it relates to the economy. And I have no problem with that, Dr. Gordon, but let's just examine just for a moment mm -hmm. here. Uh, let's look at economic and socioeconomic status. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, if we look at Dr. James Gordon as a business person and try to categorize the economic status that you were falling in, that is way above. So the impact that well, you were relating to it previously my impact on people who are in your category, but not Henry and I, the people mm -hmm. who are on the bottom are not receiving any type of grand tour, to, you know, because of deregulation. You make sound like no, we, you and me make different. Yeah, Come yeah. on now, Robert Ballard. Uh, yeah, you, uh, Robert. Say, do, do we make different? <laughs> yeah, yeah, Robert. You know, I'm you, talking about not 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 that we make different, Dr. Garner. But I'm day, saying that uh, at the end of the day, if my income has a brother I see will attest to it, oh, if, I, if I if I release my taxes. <laughs> And I would demand that. I would demand but that. I would say this. I, I, I would say this. Ten years ago, okay, ten years ago, and maybe 15 years ago, but certainly ten years ago, my income was a lot different than it was than I it is today. That. I do. So everybody's feeling the pinch. Right. But the policies that are put in place mm -hmm. by President Obama or President Trump, may, it's going to take a while to get down to Main Street America. Mm -hmm. That's all I'm saying. I'm saying that say, give the guy... A chance. We give President Obama a chance. We give President Trump a chance. But let's see if these policies work in, in regards to the economy. Is our president sometimes over emotional? Yeah. Oh, right. Is the news media sometimes over emotional? The little newscasters? Yeah. Well, so we, but we the news media side. deal with facts, though. No, they don't. No, sometimes yeah. they make up their own facts. Right, oh, sometimes they make up their own facts. Well, we I would say they should deal that. with facts, and they should be emotionless. But, but they're would, not robots. They're I would, humans. I would say this before we conclude this uh, discussion today is that the president is the president. The media is the media. The president cannot put himself down to the level that he's, he's saying uh, the fake media to be fake president. And that's what we want. We want to see a president that's a president that don't go and embarrass us uh, in, you know, in this country and in the world here. Some of the things that's being said is really un presidential. And the media has embarrassed me. The president says things that embarrass me. You're right. So they both are embarrassment. But you know, I think uh, First Lady Michelle Obama, former First Lady for Michelle Obama said it best. Mm -hmm. When they go low, we go high. And I'm still waiting for us to go high. Right. I think the Democrats right. need to go high. The media needs to go high. Uh, the president needs to go high. Everybody needs to try to do a little bit better job as right. far as Ignoring the foolishness and the rhetoric, mm -hmm. and to go and take the higher road. And that's all I'm saying. If we take oh, the higher road, two and that look, that's right. I'm trying to shut you down. If we take the, <laughs> if we take the higher road, brother Battle. Yes, sir. If we take the higher road, then eventually this this, this foolishness drops off. I think even the Bible attests to that. You know, you don't you don't 
uh, get in a debate with, with a foolish person. No, you know, at some know. point you try to uh, take the higher road and let that person drop off. So, so if, the, if the media is being foolish with their ways, so you if the leader is being foolish ask, in their ways, I think they should ask the hard think, questions. Well, uh, they should ask the hard they, questions. Evidently, that's what they're being criticized for. Well, I think <laughs> they should ask the hard questions. Well, yeah, no, they're being criticized for, for, for emotional reporting, I think. Sometimes they get their emotions into it and they put right. their opinions on it. Leave your opinions alone. You don't. We're not. We're not listening for your opinions. Leave your opinions out of it. Well, I, uh, I, I will say this is a discussion that we're going to have to continue in the yes, future sir. and look for part two of this discussion probably in about two weeks at the way things are going. But we have enjoyed being with you here Listen. on this edition of Rise and Shine, and Shine because Trump we series. hope we have done something <laughs> to rise your interest to look more into what is going on. And we hope that we have said something that uh, that you can either agree with or disagree with and uh, uh, send us your comments because we'd like to know what you're thinking. <laughs> and the send hard ones do. Send, send it to Dr. James. <laughs> <laughs> Have a good morning, guys, and thanks for tuning in. I guess we'll call this our Trump series, our presidential no. Trump series. And we'll do a couple more. I think the next show needs to be on this because we haven't talked about immigration yet. That's a whole other uh, 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 show. So uh, join us next week for this edition, uh, for another edition of Rise and Shine. Thanks for tuning in, guys. We'd like for you to join us each Sunday for Rise and Shine with Robert Battles, James Gordon, and Henry Harseeb on Fox 10 at 5.30 a.m. each Sunday morning. We'd like for you to join us so that we can provide you with information that will be beneficial to you and to your family. Mr. Buckley, how are you doing today? Doing great, Dr. Gordon. How are you, sir? Great, sir. I appreciate it. Thank you, Jenny. Appreciate your treatment with the Alabama Injury and Pain Clinic. What was your favorite thing? Well, first of all, no out-of-pocket expense, and my back has gotten great. This is great. You know, a lot of our patients worry about who's going to pay their bill. So it's good to know that the insurance company will pay after your case is settled. No out-of-pocket expenses. Call 476-PAIN, and the choice is yours.